Yeah. So I'm really happy that we are all together tonight. Thank you so much for being here on the call. It's great to, um, to be connecting on our final night here. We have Leela Stewart here. So happy to be uh, seeing your face and um, really nice that you've been able to make some of the calls while we've been together. And I always, I always do a little bit of a dub, double take when you say this evening. It's like, well, wait a minute, it's, it's my lunch time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it's quite dark here um, at the moment, and um, and it's, uh, but it's really cold and it's quite snowy. So it's, mm. yeah, it's definitely a different thing going on than um, than has been lately. And so it's a different feeling, you know, how when it's snowy and when it gets that chill to the air and then the evening sets in, it's like things get quite quiet. And um, that's what I've been feeling um, today is just really going that quiet. Well, good for spirit. Good yeah. for calling spirit in. Yeah, yeah. It's a great way to settle in. And so I know our, our topic tonight is um, nurturing the spirit and coming home to the body and the body is a container for spirit and um, so you've been really one of these people in my life that uh, that can really walk that and um, and and the beautiful thing is that that some some teachings as i as i really looked at the resources for spirit because i wanted to let everyone know that um you know as this final day of inner truth life tlc retreats coming to a close um i really wanted to make sure that you got that the resources for each of these areas of the seven elements of a nurtured life so that you could take away with you and currently um the one that i sent in the email just to let you know is not complete, but the link will be on the website quite shortly. So I just want to let you know not to worry. If you are interested in that uh, resource page, it will be there. And um, just shortly after the retreat call tonight. So, uh, and then the second recording from last night as well. And so as I was thinking about the, the resource page and resources for spirit and looking at the different things, what I noticed was, uh, how how uh, tricky it was to find resources around spirit that were non-denominational, um, mm -hmm. that did not um, uh, exclude uh, belief systems, and that were ne neutral enough to be able to be welcoming to anyone. And so um, I did include a favorite one because I thought it was appropriate. Um, but again, even she's a, she's a Buddhist, uh, you know, then Buddhist. So, <laughs> you know, just, again, the belief system is, is attached. Um, but the way she talks about it is in a really neutral way and very welcoming to anyone. And that's how I feel when I'm in your classes and your yoga therapy classes, Leela, is that you can talk about that in a way that is really accessible to other people. And it doesn't matter where they're from or what they're up to. So thank you for being that kind of teacher. First. <laughs> well, I think that being a spiritual person means that you can draw on any of the resources in that in that spiritual in any spiritual tradition because at their essence they're all really driving at the same thing or wanting us to access the same thing and so people call themselves buddhists or catholic or whatever because those traditions answer the most questions for them, I think. Mm -hmm. But if that the problem is when people exclude others, like you say, I could tell a joke here if you want, if you want <laughs> about that. You do whatever you want. <laughs> do we have time? Okay. Well, um, this guy dies and he gets sent to heaven and St. Peter welcomes him at the gate. 
And he says, welcome, welcome to heaven. You have, I'm going to take you, uh, show you around because you get to choose where you want to be in heaven. And so I'm not going to tell this correctly, but you'll get the right idea. So um, this guy, let's call him Sam, says, oh, great. So St. Peter starts taking him around and they, and they come to this place and everyone's got the bells and they're chanting and dancing and Hare Krishna. And St. Peter says, These are the Hare, this is the Hare Krishna heaven. And, and uh, uh, Sam says, oh, that looks pretty good. I'll keep it in mind. And then um, he takes them, he takes them somewhere else and um, there's people whirling around and uh, of course they're the whirling dervishes and and St. Peter says and this is the heaven for the whirling dervishes and Saint, and the Sam says oh that's that looks interesting too and um, uh, and St. Peter says well I've got a few more places to to show you so they start walking and all of a sudden St. Peter goes Shh, quiet uh, there was a big wall. He says, shh, that's the Christian heaven. And they think they're the only ones up here. <laughs> <laughs> and I could say that from any perspective. I could, if I was a Hindu, I could tell that as a Hindu joke or a Muslim, as a Muslim joke. So. <laughs> yeah, and I love how that points to, you know, the fact that um, no matter what our beliefs are, that, that, uh, we have, we have an idea of what spirit is. You yeah. Know, there is some idea that, um, that, that dwells inside us of what that, what that feels like, what that is, what it sounds like, what it looks like. Yeah. Um, and it's so, an experience, it's an experience rather than a thought. And so often it stays as a thought. Yes. And so, and so what I, try to do in my classes is applied spirituality or functional spirituality and bring it home to people as something that they can call on any any moment of any day any whether they're feeling fabulous or they're feeling depressed mm -hmm. awesome yes you do <laughs> so i wanted and that to... and that self-nurture yeah well that that's the piece that really that really calls to me you know is that how supported we feel when we're in touch with that part of ourselves um and the degree to which we can you know be in contact with that part i think um is the degree to which that we feel at home in in the body yeah and you know as i've listen to the other the other presenters i keep having this same thought well everything everything that everyone is saying is fabulous and sometimes we forget spirit and for me our soul and that's of course what the wisdom tradition says is the basic cause of suffering but for me when I listened, when I listened to everyone else, I kept thinking, but it's spirit that provides the context for everything else that has been said. Mm. And, and that's, that's the mystery. And, you know, we have, we, if we forget that we're part of something greater than ourselves, if we forget that mystery, and if we forget that at some point we have to give up our vision boards and our accomplishments and even at the end our precious very precious life if we forget that then then we get stuck in the the thoughts and the emotions and the the doings mm. i feel quite strong i feel quite strong about this and even when i was a kid i it, it just struck me as so awful that people for people didn't seem to remember that everything is sacred that that their body is sacred that that their being is sacred that the that the earth is sacred and 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 so 
I guess my, you know, my quest is always to, to bring that forward and then to offer at least some suggestions as to how we might nurture, how we might feed spirit. Because that's, if we don't have that, then, yeah, we just forget. And I'll, I'll just tell one quick story about this. I, um, I had a student that had very severe fibromyalgia and she'd been in a number of car accidents and she was in a lot of pain most of the time. Mm. And um, she came to me after, and she'd been a student for quite some time. She came to me after, uh, um, after a class and she said, you know, the class that gave me the most relief for my pain was the class that we did on forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And so it's that. I mean, it's great to have aspiration and it's great to have goals and vision boards and all of that. But mm-hmm. there's something about creating. And I think um, the, I, I don't remember her name, but the woman from, that had the cabin in Mamio Beach. Yeah, Kathleen. Kathleen, yeah, she alluded to this and that if we don't, if we don't on a regular basis create a space for and a quiet, then we miss that quiet, still voice that is spirit. Yes, absolutely. That tells us things. Yeah, I love what you're yeah. saying because as you were talking, you know, I, I really remembered when I was a kid and feeling that heartbreak when you would see someone um, not treating, say, an animal in a sacred way mm-hmm. or, you know, um, not treating their children in a sacred way or not being yourself treated in that way and how heartbreaking that can be. And when you, when you do bring in that context that this is a you know this is part of ourselves that is wanting to experience what's happening in the body but in this fuller way in a fuller sense if we don't keep that in mind and how connected that we all are that yes that we can end up just broken hearted yeah or just caught up just caught up in our likes and dislikes and our doings and i and i think that one of the big problems in the world right now is that is that people think that that's it and that and that they've lost touch of this part of us that is really the source of us you know it's the source of our body and our our actions and our thoughts and if we if we don't um honor that if we don't honor that, then then our life is, I think, somewhat less mm. than our than our infinite potential, our full potential. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I I I don't want, I don't have any um, uh, formulas, or I don't have a PDF handout on how to <laughs> how to call on spirit for. Um, uh, for self-nurture because everyone the thing is that everyone has to find their own path Mm -hmm. and my path is not everyone else's path yeah but what I can say is that if you make a commitment to meditating to finding some time in your day to touch base with spirit then your life will be bigger. Yeah, and when I think of the word bigger, what comes to mind is like, there is more, it's like fuller, but like fuller inside me. So yeah. more parts are awake, more parts are inhabited by my yes. soul. And that's the sense of bigger that I get. Yeah, and you know, Sri Aurobindo, a great um, spiritual teacher um, had this, when I read this image in his book, in one of his books, it was exactly that. He said, he said that our soul is pushing out from the inside, giving us shape, giving us, you know, giving us action and 
of this. Yeah, when we when we when we have that one eye in and one eye into the outer world, then we're not allowing our um, our mind to be pulled by the by the dazzling bits of the outer world. We're 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 still connected to that inner place and then we know what we're doing we know that we're playing the game we know that we're in um in attachment we know that we're in our old habit yeah the awareness is there the awareness is there because because it's the because whatever you want to call it soul spirit that's our consciousness that's our that's our big awareness and we're just a little parcel of that great awareness. Mm -hmm. And when we access that, then we can have the, a different perspective on things. Mm -hmm. That makes it not so terrible if somebody breaks up with us or if we lose something. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, because we yeah. have the bigger picture. We have the bigger per picture. So I want to um, I want to move into uh, what I've done each evening, of course, is do a, a a little practice, and so I want to do that now, if that's okay with you, because it's a you know it's great to have the um, concepts rushing around in here, but I'd love to settle them down into the body yes. the moment. Yeah. So just as you're settling into your space and I just love seeing Claire like just reclined and in yeah. this because she's been a tech host and she's had to stay on top of things. And now she's like, I'm in my happy place. <laughs> so good to see you and you again, Judith as well. I'm glad. And Celeste, I know she's having, um, she's just staying off camera tonight. And one, the invitation tonight is actually to just, Think of a time that you had an experience of spirit. Just remember a time and just call it into your awareness. You need to close your eyes to bring it into more um, full color then. Just imagining that time that happened, you felt that experience of spirit. And remembering where you were, remembering perhaps the smell or the sounds around you, remembering the details of the room, maybe what you were wearing or bring in some more of those details, replay it in your mind. And just as you're tapping into whatever happens in your body as you remember, just zeroing in on where one part of your body that where that experience you can really sense something a little louder. So uh, you're having some inspiration or spaciousness or whatever your experience is, where is it happening most in your body as you think of this connection with spirit? And as you locate that, take your time and I invite you now, as we've done through the week, is reaching out with your dial in front of you that's called spirit. It has a label on it. And let's take it in your hand. Reach your hand out. Take your spirit dial. And let's just turn up the volume or down. Just, just play with the volume. You can make it louder inside of you. Fill yourself up. You can dim it down if it's a bit much. Notice what happens. 
How's your breath and your posture? And taking that long, deep breath in. When you're ready, fill that up and then let it go. Letting the dial go. When you're ready, leave it at a volume that's comfortable for you. Considering what that was like for you. And softly opening up that gaze once again when you're ready. And as you come back, if there's anything anyone wanted to share. About I what? Did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that question. It, it, it evoked a, a really old, old experience when I was in my 20s and traveling in, in Europe. And I was in southern France and as only European countries can have an old stone bridge over, uh, over a, 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 a brook. Mm. And I was standing on it, just closing my eyes, feeling the just feeling it and hearing that incredible sound and all of a sudden I had this experience of I I and I can't even really say it I was in the sound and in the river mm. and the river would and the sound was in me and I was one with them it was the most amazing experience and I wasn't even stoned <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> that's good that you were some of us which some of us did in our 20s <laughs> yeah and it, and it's good because um it, it's a you can verify it's verifiable in a way you know when you have an altered state of conscious whether it's drinking or whatever it is uh, overtired any of that sometimes you can go hmm was that just you know my mind playing tricks with me <laughs> but sometimes it's more verifiable when you, when you know that there's no other influence going on does anyone else have something like that because i i resonate with that one you have something judith yeah let's hear from judith as well about what happened for her yeah it was i was i still remember it vividly i was five years old and I was walking down the street in Brooklyn, New York, behind my parents. My father was in the Navy at the time at the Naval Yard there. Mm. And all of a sudden, this bubble was around me. Mm. And I'd never seen it before until tonight. But when you, when you started asking about the sensations, all of a sudden, I could feel the little coat I had on and the little gloves. Because in those days, little girls had to wear gloves in the city. Um, and then I felt something holding my hand through my, through, even through my gloves. I could feel it on my skin, like my hand was being held. Mm. And it, and that was one of the few times I ever felt completely, completely safe. Wow. How oh, beautiful. Thank you. And how was it when you turned the dial on that? Did something happen? Oh yeah, I I, I was right back in there and the, and the dial went way up. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so beautiful that we have the, we now have a spirit dial that we can tap into and, uh, and that it's attached to this really, um, this moment that's so precious to you. Thank you for sharing that. And is there anyone else that had something go on that wants to pipe up? I know you've had experiences of spirit, people. <laughs> That's okay if you don't want to share it tonight, but I just, just know that I know. <laughs> um, hi, Steve. How are you? Good to see you. I'm glad that you're here tonight. I'm good, thanks. 
Good. Good to hear that, uh, that you're all right. We just had an um, experiential minute here of um, tapping in. I'll just let you know what the question was, um, was around remembering a time that you, you've had an experience of spirit, whatever that is to you. And so the invitation is at some point in time to, to recall that as vividly as you can and see, you know, really recreate it in your mind's eye and then be able to reach in on your spirit dial as if you have one in your hand and be able to crank up the volume or turn it down or, and just have a little uh, dial into that experience and what it brought you. So that's the invitation at some point in time. I just wanted to share that before we moved on. So Leela, yeah, so we'll come back to um, some more talking about um, your actual experience of self-nurture. Um, we probably have, you know, maybe five, seven, eight minutes, something like that to, to delve in, but just ask, maybe asking you um, about a time where self-nurture had to come first would be great. And, and um, what happened with that? And I'll ask you a couple more questions, maybe something like what were the hurdles that happened when you wanted to put it first? Um, or if there was some payoffs and what was the outcome when you, you did manage to put it first? So just speaking to that. A well, little. yeah, I was, I was forced. Mm. I was forced. Um, I, I had a very, very busy life lots of giving in fact over giving and always doing way too much with way too many people and uh and i got very sick mm. and i thought i was doing good self-care but i realized maybe and i mean really sick for many many years and i and it took me probably seven years before i realized you know what you burnt out you just burnt out and the I ended up with chronic fatigue and with systemic inflammatory arthritis. And so I was, I was in bed for, you know, horizontal for 16 hours a day and, and dead the rest of the time and, you know, in excruciating pain when I couldn't walk. And so I was, t I, when I relate this story, I often say that I was taken down to zero. I experienced an ego death because I could not be anything. I could not be a wife. I could not be a teacher. I could not be a therapist. I could not be a sister. I could not be a friend. I could not be anything. And so it forced me to look at, well, then who are you? And if this is going to be your life for the rest of your life, then what are you going to do? What am I, what are you going to do with that? And, and so through many cycles of thinking that I was better and being thrown back into the pit, I, I realized that like you, uh, you know, that's why I love you because you are saying, you are giving the message that self-nurture has to be the foundation. Mm -hmm. It has to be in place before anything else. Mm -hmm. and, and what I realized as far as healing goes, I, I didn't call it self-nurture, I called it healing because I was so sick, mm -hmm. um, is that and again, here's, I'm, I'm, I'm referring again to the space that you have to create in yourself. Yeah. And so I realized that I had been doing my healing the same way I had done everything else in my life with way too much enthusiasm and way too much effort and trying way too many things. Mm. And so I, re and so I think that's when I really, our loud spirit in because I, I realized I'm helpless. I'm ignorant. I don't, I don't know how my healing is going to happen. I don't, I don't know what self nurture looks like. I don't know what self love feels like. Like I'm just ignorant. God help me. 
and I just surrendered. And I, and, you know, I, I remember the exact moment when that happened, when I realized, you know, I can't do this. I, I have to just create a space in myself for healing to happen in any way that it's supposed to happen. Mm. Not because I think that this is the way it should happen. Mm -hmm. And that's why that silent time that Kathleen talked about and that I'm talking about is so important because in that silent time, that still quiet voice of spirit says, go here or talk to that person. Mm -hmm. or this is what you need to do, mm. or this is what you need to let go of. Mm. And, and it's, I'm always surprised when I meditate, when I meditate now, the first, you know, I give the first 15, 20 minutes or so just over to whatever comes into my head. And it's often things like, oh, you forgot to do this. Oh, that's a good idea for, <laughs> for doing that. And so that I've come to rely on that and to trust and to trust that space mm -hmm. because that mystery, we don't know. We don't know. And if we, if we can somehow develop a faith or a trust that it's okay not to know. And that if we just, you know, it sounds kind of corny to say open ourselves up because I mean, it, it doesn't preclude us from doing the hard work, mm -hmm. but it's making the space for inspiration and to know what's right for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I just, you know, going back to the, our exercise of tapping into our experience of spirit, partly as a way of knowing what that feels like, knowing what it might sound like, knowing what it might be like to be in that space and to have for that moment have that sense of faith and it's scary it's, it's scary to let go of control mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that i learned being sick for so many years mm -hmm. is that i'm not in control here and the more i try and be in control mm -hmm. the more shit happens mm -hmm. so let it go girl <laughs> Yeah. And, and, yeah and and just and it's scary to be in that space of of not knowing it's yeah. really scary well it sounds and, like one of the biggest feeling, hurdles. Yeah. yeah it's that feeling of 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 scariness that we i think we need to get comfortable with that, that's where the gold is yeah yeah and i love what jen was saying too about you know being in the unknown and the more you let yourself be there, the more comfortable that it can get. Um, because there is all, you know, when you're curious about things and all the possibilities are available, when you're completely certain about things in the controlling mind, you know, knowing how it has to happen, it shuts everything down. Okay, now you're in this box, you know, now it's yeah. limited to just this way, this path. Yeah. But yeah. when you're in the unknown place, then it's like you're welcoming in all of the universal intelligence. Yes. And then you get, you get the embodied experience of when that universal intelligence gives you, gives you an inspiration and an answer. And then you start to trust that mm -hmm. and, and then start to see, oh, well, I didn't listen to that. And look at what happened. And <laughs> oh, yeah, I listened to that. And, and this happened. Yeah. Because that, that, that's spirit guiding us. Yeah, it's like a grand um, experimentation. Mm -hmm. you know, like we're, we could be scientists about it, which is funny to bring that into this. But that's where science and spirituality are completely meshing now. Or, but you can bring that in as, as a way of experiencing, okay, yeah, I followed that gut feeling that time. And this is what played out. So you just prove it to yourself, you know, there's yeah. not like anyone needs to come in and say, you know, yeah, here's this, how it all works. And this is what needs to happen in terms for you to be connected to spirit and be guided. No, it's, it's your path. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's what all this, that's what all the wisdom traditions tell us that, you know, even in the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali says, you know, chant Om or meditate or do this or do that or do anything. He, said, he says, do anything that brings you closer <laughs> to soul, to spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, So now when, when you're um, talking about your experience and you, you know, you know, it was really, I've heard, I've heard you talk about it, but tonight it really, I don't know, it just hit a chord inside of me Um, because I think I've been closer to that, that burnout place um, so many times that, um, that it, now it, it, it really is a trigger for me. So as I was ta- hearing you speak about it and, and that there was the barrier to putting self care first was, it's, it sounds like, you know, this doing right, like doing yeah. it, you've always done it. So it sounds like your, your image of yourself or your idea of who you were, you know, well, I'm a teacher and I'm a this and I'm a that. And so sometimes it's like all those things have to go to the side and the, the roles have to be removed, you know, take the role, you know, this is my teacher role and take that off. You know, this is my, you know, business hat and all those things to get to the zero. But then once you have been there for a while, what were the payoffs? Well, I, my life is totally different and I, you know, I, it's been, it's been 18 years mm-hmm. that I'm finally feeling like a real human being again mm-hmm. and that, that I can do things. I can travel and I can teach, for example. But the path was very hard. And what I learned is that I, it's absolutely essential for me to curate my life. And I I love that phrase, to curate my life so that it is sustainable. And I know Jenny Jenny, uh, referenced this yesterday as well. And what does sustainable mean to you? Mm -hmm. You know, does it mean, I mean, I think we all have have a good sense of, are we overdoing it? You know, do I have time? I mean, at, one, at that time, I thought that doing laundry and going shopping and cleaning the house was something that you did at night. Mm. <laughs> you know, so so now I know that if I do something that takes energy, okay, okay well, actually, I'll back up. What I realized when I was really sick is that everything takes energy and everything has an energetic cost, even listening. So there was a time when I couldn't even listen to people because it took too much energy. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything has an energetic cost and we have X amount of energy in our being. And so how do you want to spend that so that you still keep some in reserve so that you, that you can still function well? And, um, and so just looking at, well, how much does this cost me? And how much does that cost me? And, and for me now, for example, when I travel to teach, I know that I have to have so many days to, to get over my jet lag. I know that I need to have so many days rest in between engagements. And I know that I can only do so many engagements. Yeah. And I know that I can't do more than two big things in a day or, you know, or one big thing in a day. Mm-hmm. It's, that's it. And, and I have to do yoga nidra a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love that you're pointing to discernment and being able to tune into yourself uh, around discerning what, you know, what it is that you need and the looking at the energy and, with self nurture as a um, I've been kind of touching on throughout the week is self nurture as a way of being and how you approach the laundry. Yeah. Uh, and I don't yes. know. How do I curate my life so that my self nurture allows me to do what I want to do with ease. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so self nurture is not a thing that you do. It is definitely a thing that is your life. 
Mm. And I, I say to younger people, use me as, an ex as a really bad example <laughs> of what not, you know, of what not to do. And we, I think that, um, I, I, I'm talking to the converted here, I think, but for, especially when we know people in their, in their 40s and early 50s, we, to, to really educate them that you had this kind of energy when you, when you were in your 20s and your 30s, and you have to know that your energetic self changes in your 40s and your 50s, and you absolutely cannot keep up the same pace. Mm. And, and I didn't know that. I thought that I could keep going at that pace forever. Yeah, yeah. It was a great pace. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love you're talking about, um, you know, giving, giving ourselves a chance every so often and at a regular interval maybe of um, how has our capacity changed? Maybe we had, uh, you know, something happen as part to part of our body, some condition happen. And of course that changes our capacity um, as age does. My grandmother is the prime example of this at 94. She's 94 in a few days. Yeah. You no. Know, and she's comparing herself to when she's 60. She's like, why am I so dumb? I'm like, Ben, you're not dumb. You know, you just, you know, you don't have access to as many of the things in your mind that as you used to, because your mind, your actual brain inside your head, you know, has, has some, had some changes, right? Yeah. I don't like to remind her that she's, you know, had some mini strokes in that because she doesn't like to think about that, but it's just the capacity and knowing that, um, you know, just to, be in tune with our own capacity, depending on what we're dealing with, you know, how much we're dealing with can diminish our capacity to um, do all of the foundational self care work that may help us, you know, to deal with all those things. But yeah. if we let all those things take us away, and, and yeah, the underlying foundation, then it's like, you know, the house of cards, right? So yeah. And from a from a, a a spirit perspective, the bigger picture for as we age and for your grandmother is that the thoughts start going because it's time for us to give at some point to give up all our thoughts. And well, I, I, you know, I love the I love the yoga tradition because the reminder is always there whenever we do shavasana or you know if we if we have delved into the uh, into the yogic wisdom is that always remember that we're only here for a short time mm -hmm. and that we're and that we're all going to die and that we can't take anything with us mm. except our soul and have we have we fed our soul or have we not fed our soul yeah or even had a relationship with it uh, yeah you know yeah. so to me that's um that's a real um, piece that I, I love to think about is, um, is each of the seven elements of a nurtured life is having that capacity to um, have a relationship with it of some kind, you know, yeah. have a friendship with it, you know, have a yeah. friendship with your body, you know, have a and, friendship with your space around you, you know? Yeah. And, and the other thing that I was going to say is that um, it was Ayurvedic medicine that, um, that changed my life and what I love about Ayurveda is that it also says everything is important yeah. so how you what you're thinking is important how you're eating is important I mean I don't mean what you're eating I mean how you're eating are you eating while you're while you're on your phone or while you're upset or um, everything is important the season is important the time of day is important everything is important and so when when you know your own nature, and this is what Ayurveda says, when you know your own nature and yoga asks us to do self-study so that we know our own nature, then you know what keeps you in balance and you know what takes you out of balance. And, the, and you know that it's uh, prajna parada, a, a crime against wisdom when you know that something is not good for you and you do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then you just see that. 
you know, the, the witness, the wisdom part of you just sees that and says, oh, there I go again, instead of crapping on yourself for doing it. Right. Yeah. Having that gentleness like you would with the friend. It's like, yeah, you messed up, you know, well, you know, that's just like every other human, seven and a half billion of us doing it every day, you know? Yeah. So I love that. Thank you, Leela. And I'm going to have to move into now yes. um, the recording that we did pre-recorded uh, practice because we weren't sure um, coming from where you were. I mean, you actually have had to go to someone else's house in order to even have access to the internet to do this interview. So thank you for that. Um, and the pre-recorded is something we did before you left for India and, and then Australia. So um, I will uh, put that on um, now if everyone is good to go. If anyone has any concerns or needs anything, just, you know. Can I just, say, can I just say one thing about it? Yes, please. Um, uh, we are, we are, I love Wayne Dyer's uh, thought that we are souls having a human experience, not humans having a soul experience. Mm -hmm. And so when I, when I work with spirit, I, I firmly ground that in the body. And so this practice is about finding your feet. <laughs> Yeah, the finding the feet, and I wanted to add to that what touched me about that practice, and I've been doing it with you for a while, is that the feet, as you described it, you know, you is that these points at which that we touch the ground, the one consistent thing other than us and our body is, of course, the ground beneath us through our whole entire life, and that our relationship um, to the ground through our feet um, and other parts when they when they go there is like a real great example of our relationship to support it almost gives us that real you know and I love when you talk about that and that that has been a big teaching for me is how do I relate to support in my life you know and I've been very uh, self very independent my whole life for numerous reasons and um, that helped me um, feel like we're in this together. Me, the ground, you people, you know, so, and all the rest of, of living things on the planet. So let's um, play this and thanks for that setup and for everything that you share with me, Leela. You're so special to me. Here we are. Lead the way here. Oh, my little technological gymnastics. I'm going to be so fit after this. So welcome to the final day of this retreat on self-nurturing and today is the day where we honor and celebrate spirit and I have a quote from Rumi that really articulates um, my sense of this. He asks, how will you know the difficulties of being human? You are always flying off to blue perfection. Where will you plant your grief seeds? Workers need ground to scrape and hoe, not the sky of unspecified desire. What I love about this quote from Rumi is that as I believe, we need to be firmly established in our body before we can really, I think, have a, a spiritual life. So the practice today is going to be first, let's get grounded in our body. And then secondly, we'll do a, a seated meditation where we get to fly off to the sky of unspecified desires for a while. <laughs> so I'd like to start with standing. And you won't be able to see my, 
my upper body, but that's okay because what's most important is that you see my legs and feet. So please come to stand. So take a few moments and allow your body, the weight of your body, to arrive on the floor. Can you feel that there is something beneath you that is supporting you? Where do you feel that in your feet? What does that feel like? How are you standing on that surface, that supportive surface of the ground? Can you allow that support to come up your body? Can you allow that support that your feet are resting into, into your knees. What does that feel like to allow the support of the earth into your knees? And can you allow that support to come up even higher into your pelvis and your hips? You may notice as you're inquiring here that you come across parts of you that are holding away from the support of the surface and that's perfectly fine. You're simply exploring, doing an inquiry to see what do I do normally? How do I stand normally, habitually? And can you allow that support to rise up even further into your spine? Into your head, your skull, into your shoulders. And can you feel that there's something inside of you that gives you the strength to stand? Something that is enlivening you so that you can stand and move and walk. So no matter what our spiritual beliefs, we can all agree, I think, that there is something inside of us that enlivens us, that animates us, and that when we have it, we function, all of our organs and systems function, and when we don't have it, we're not alive. And so it's that, whatever you want to call it, energy, awareness, soul, consciousness, whatever it is, whatever, however you call it, there's something inside of us that allows you to stand upright and to move and to think and to process. So getting a sense for that, that whatever you call it, something that is expanding from the inside, filling your body and animating it. And then starting to shift your weight a little bit forward onto your toes very slowly and then point by point by point very slowly coming back onto your heels without raising your feet off the floor. Just going back and forth and feel
feeling, oh, that's what the rest of my body does when I shift forward on my toes. And then as you shift back to your heels, oh, that's how my body is when I shift my weight back on my heels. Going back and forth a few times. And then just settling into what is your usual way of standing. And the way that you usually stand is interesting. How, how are you standing? Where is your weight normally? Is it more forward? Is it more on the inside or the outside? Making this base level of how you stand normally, how you accept gravity or don't Gravity is always pulling us down, but then we have this amazing energy inside of us that is keeping us upright. So we're going to play a little bit with the feet. And this is a practice called the foot triangles. And in a standing body, the weight of the upper body comes down to the ground through three points in the feet the ball of the big toe, the ball of the little toe. And if you draw a line from your ankle bones down to where the dirty part meets the clean part, that's the third point. And that forms a triangle. And the triangle is the most stable, efficient shape in nature. And so when we can get a sense for that foot triangle, then the rest of our body can shift and feel perhaps a little bit more supported, a little more um, embodied. So choose a foot, doesn't matter which foot. Some people like to start on the foot that is less aware and the other, other people like to start on the smarter foot. So choose a foot. And then start just by lifting the toes of that foot and spreading them, wiggling them, trying to get some space between them, noticing which ones move and which ones don't so well. And then come up on the ball of your foot and then shift your weight just a little bit forward onto the big toe ball joint. We want to wake up the nervous system to the existence of this place on the foot. So just a few times shifting your weight forward and then off. This is my big toe ball joint. And then moving to the second toe ball joint and doing a couple of passes on that ball joint. This is my second toe ball joint. You're articulating for your nervous system these places. And then the third toe ball joint. And you're noticing, hmm, that one's pretty clear. Hmm, that one's not so clear. So just noticing that. And then the fourth toe ball joint, a few passes there. And then the fifth one. This is where, for me, it gets a little, a little obscure. So I have to, when I do this, I always do a little bit extra on the places that are a little obscure. And then place the foot back down on the floor and do just a quick scan. Did that change how you're standing? Does that change how one side of the body is compared to the other? Pick up the inner edge of the foot now. And if you're on a yoga mat, you can use the stickiness of the mat to hook the little toe ball joint into, and then reach the big toe ball joint across toward the midline and then set it down. Take a moment to, so your nervous system can register what's happened in terms of broadening this metatarsal arch. And then lift the outer edge Anchor the big toe ball joint and reach the little toe ball joint as far across to the outside.
outside as you can without a lot of effort. It's really easy to over effort this. So make it nice and easy and then set it down. And do that a few times. So you're anchoring, reaching, landing, and then allowing integration. You're creating a dynamic tension between the fixed point, the anchored point, and the moving point. Good. And then just take a moment and notice if that's changed anything. And come up on the ball of the foot. Now, anchor down through that little toe ball joint again. And you want to keep that point anchored as you very, very gently move the knee toward the inside just a little bit and then back. It's kind of like a knee wave. And if you look down at your little toe and it's pivoting, then that's not what you want to do. You want to fix that so that you create the fixed point in that little toe ball joint and then the moving point is the knee. So the little toe is anchored down. Good. And then change now so that the big toe ball joint is anchored. And then move the knee to the outside now. And most people will feel a little pull from the big toe ball joint to the inner knee. And then circle around those ball joints as though you're giving them a nice massage. First in one direction, then in the other direction. And then staying up on the ball joint. Now we'll work with the longitudinal dimension. So anchoring the whole ball joint into the stickiness of the mat and reaching the heel away. So keeping that dynamic tension as you reach the heel back and down and then landing and allowing your body to feel that, adjust to that. And then pick the, anchor the heel now and, and picking the rest of the foot up and reaching the ball joints away from the heel point and then setting it down. So now we're creating more elongation through the foot and doing that a few times, anchoring, reaching, landing and integrating. And again, watching your effort level. If you're not breathing, then you're using too much effort. And if you've got a death grip on the mat, <laughs> you're also not uh, breathing. So what, uh, playing with the concept of right effort, light effort. Good, and then let that go. And I forgot to mention that as you're doing this, you want to have your feet lined up. So one not, not one in front of the other, but at the same level. So take a moment now with your eyes closed, if that's comfortable. And notice any difference between the two sides. And come up with a word or two or a phrase in your mind and register that in your mind. Name that for yourself. Mine is settled in. Uh -huh. Mine is lightness. Okay, let's do the other side. So first, picking the toes up and wiggling them and spreading them. So keep the balls of the feet on the balls of the toes on the floor. And you're wiggling and spreading. And again, this foot may be quite different. Some toes may be very agile, others not. Watching your effort level. And then coming up on the ball of the foot and shifting your weight forward onto the big toe ball joint a couple of times. And then the second toe ball joint. If any of these points feel obscure to you, you can reach down and actually touch that ball joint to give some, a tactile cue. Because you, you want to wake up the nervous system to the existence of these. For two or 
or three passes in each ball joint. Noticing which ones are more clear in your nervous system. And then when you finish, set your foot back down on the floor. Take a moment and open attention to notice. And then lifting the inner edge of the foot, anchoring the little toe ball joint and reaching the big toe ball joint across. Keeping that dynamic tension the whole way and then landing. And integrating. Then anchoring the big toe ball joint, reaching the little toe ball joint across to the outside. And then landing. As much as possible, you want all of these movements to be from the groins down. So you don't want your upper body to be swaying. So it takes a little bit of core engagement. Going back and forth in that sideways movement a few times. And then coming up on the ball of the foot, anchoring the little toe ball joint and waving the knee slowly to the inside, feeling the little pull from the little toe ball joint to the outer knee, waving back and forth, again, light effort, light effort. And then shifting to the big toe ball joint, anchoring it and moving the knee to the outside, waving. Knee doesn't like to be torqued very much, so you're really listening, going slowly, lightly, in a refined kind of way. And then circling around all of those ball joints, giving them a massage. And you might even be able to tell, gee, I'm massaging five, four, three, two, one, when I go in this direction, and then changing directions. Now I'm massaging one, two, three, four, five. So the more information the brain has, the nervous system has, it will integrate that and use that in your regular standing, your regular. Okay, so putting that foot down, taking a moment to open attention. And then coming up on the ball joint, reaching the heel back and down. Pausing a moment there. Allowing your body to notice that. And then lifting the ball joint up and reaching it forward. Keeping that dynamic tension as you set it down. And then pause. We're doing that a few times in each direction, watching your effort level. It's really easy to sneak up. I've been doing this a lot of years and I still find myself <laughs> over efforting. So the question could be, how, uh, how much effort do I actually need in order to accomplish this simple? And then let that go. Stand with your eyes closed if that's available to you. And notice what's different about this standing. And again, give yourself a couple of words. I feel prana moving. I feel lots of energy stinging around my body. It's like my, what was a spotlight on some of these places has become sort of a floodlight in my lower leg, down to me, down to the feet of awareness. Hmm. Good. So, Containing that energy, come down to 
sitting either in a chair or on a bolster or any way any place that you can sit in a way where your spine can be erect and comfortable that you feel like you can be balanced on your sitting bones take a moment and feel how does that last practice reverberate through your sitting? The second practice we're going to do is, is called the heart flame, the soul flame. So if you want, you can form this mudra, which is the Garuda mudra, the ego mudra, and place your hands over your heart. If that's not comfortable, just place your hands over your heart. The ego soars and has a different perspective. And when we are living from spirit, then we see things from a different angle. Closing your eyes, if that's okay. Otherwise, just lowering your gaze. And taking a moment to feel your body moving as the air moves in and the air moves out. Especially the feeling directly under your hands. Now imagine that underneath your hands is your heart. And in fact, you don't have to imagine it. It's true. There is a heart there. But in your mind, go deep into your heart and imagine that in the deepest, deepest part of your heart is the cave of your heart. And in that cave is a flame. Your soul flame. And with each inhalation, imagine that you are fanning that flame so that it grows a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter. with successive breaths, keep expanding that image of that soul flame growing with each breath. So that it starts to fill the whole cave. chest and gradually and incrementally breath by breath that soul flame fills your whole body with brightness with lightness with soul flame And if visualization is not your thing, then just think that. Your whole physical body filled with the light of the soul. And then expand little bit by little 
little bit that soul flame beyond the boundaries of your physical body to fill your energy body. And your energy body is said to be as big as the distance of breath is away from the body when you exhale. So in your mind's eye or in your mind imagining that soul flame growing. And then growing even more past the boundaries of your energy body, your pranic body, into your emotional body. And it's said that the emotional body is as big as somebody can your emotion. Sometimes you can enter a room and you know that someone is angry or sad. So growing your heart flame, growing your soul flame, as big as that. And then growing it even bigger, if that feels okay, this, it, you have to listen to your body, to yourself. And if it doesn't feel safe or comfortable for you to keep expanding in that way, then stay at whatever level you feel most comfortable at. But if you want to go a bit farther, keep expanding that soul flame even bigger to encompass your intellectual body. And it's said that your intellectual body is as big as, as far as a thought can go, which is pretty far. And in your mind now, keep expanding as far as is comfortable, even to the outer reaches of the universe, into infinity, infinity above you, below you, in front and back, side to side. And you are in the center of that. And your, your soul flame is now touching the soul flames of everyone else on this call, everyone in the world, that part of us that is the same, is connected to everyone else. That sense of connection and oneness. Savor that for a moment. Feeling your boundaries boundless. But you are that point of light in the middle of all of it. And now start to shrink back down a little more quickly to the level of the intellect, the level of the emotional body, the chronic body back into your physical body and then that flame shrinking, shrinking, shrinking and going right back into your heart cave where it belongs. Feeling the strength of that and the power of that heart flame, that soul flame that enlivens you. Take your hands, if you still got them on your chest, take them away and put them on your lap. Focus on your inhalations a little more and feel the air coming into your body and filling and bringing with it a sense of alertness and action energy. 
next day. And take your hands and just tuck your body a little bit to bring yourself back. Your feet, your legs, your arms, nice and soft. This is self-nurture, so gentle, compassionate, tapping. Your shoulders, your head, your face. So there you have two practices for creating a home for spirit in your body. Grounding, connecting to the earth, and knowing that you are alive. Namaste. Thank you for your presence. Oh. So here we are back. Thank you so much, Leela. Oops, we didn't realize the time constraints when we recorded that back in December. <laughs> I, I looked at the wrong video today when I saw how long um, I was actually looking at Rachel's initial video. So I apologize and I sent a little yeah. chat via Robin. So hopefully you all got that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm feeling quite uh, at my leisure at the moment, feeling a little, um, yeah, zen. So hopefully you took some nurture from that experience. And I just wondered, because this is the final night of the retreat, and you realize we've gone late, but welcoming anyone to um, share something that they feel is important for the group to know that wants to be said into the space. Um, I just like to say, Layla, that was just lovely. And I really liked, um, well, the placement of the hands and, it, and I could visualize, get a good visualization of, um, being the eagle and looking back down on my life and I, and sort of seeing and get, having a different perspective. So it's something I think I'll look forward to doing at another time and, and taking a note and going, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, so a great great. Yeah. Yeah. it's a great mudra. Sorry? It's a great mudra. Mm. Yeah. I love yeah. that too. Yeah, I had forgotten that from the video actually because we did it so long ago. Mm. I was like, oh, the eagle. I saw one. Yeah, of it was lovely. A young one in the tree today Ooh. above where I was driving. That inspired. Coming from your house, Leela. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyone else that wanted something? Thank you, Robin, for piping up. And thank you so much for doing the tech hosting tonight and being present with You're us. Welcome. Yay. Yeah, and I love your your coaching has been invaluable to me this year. I'm so happy that our paths crossed. Mm. Um, you me are too. an impeccable coach. Thank you. Me too. Thank I'm you and likewise. It. Thank you and likewise. Uh oh. Some feedback going on. Oh, there we go. It's all muted. Thanks, Robin. So we're saying goodbye. Yeah, if anyone else, I just want, I don't want to speed out because it is our final one. And I know we're over time already, but just anyone that wanted to share anything, last words from the retreat. Wanda? Yeah. It, it's a good one to go over time on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Wanda. <laughs> that was a very, very lovely meditation. I'm just um, still kind of floating out there and... Um, feeling very relaxed and, and uh, it's amazing how still the body can become when the mind just lets go. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say a special thank you to Shayla for doing this 
and uh, how honored I am to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, here I am in the middle of nowhere and I have my kindreds right here. <laughs> that, so, thank you. Yeah. That's, thank you for touching on that, Wanda. I'm just so happy that you um, were brought to that state of being. I know it's a valuable state for us all to, to reach and come to in our day to day. And Leela is particularly um, a wonderful guide. And the the uh, comment of yours, Wanda, about being with um, you know, with your troop, I I put it out in the newsletter, but just to reach out and say, I really feel the um, sort of spiritually compelled, let's call it, to uh, come together once a week. Um, well, I th I'll just come up on this space, the same number, the same length. And maybe at 6 30 at night to 7 30 at night last week. And um, if people want to join me, I think I will do it on Fridays because um, I like to go to yoga and yoga therapy class. It's really important to me. So a lot of my notes are taken, but I, I think that will be the night. Um, and yeah, just an invitation for people to come and join. Every Friday, I will open this space. And if I'm here by myself, I will be doing my self-nurture. If I'm not, then we will do that together and witness each other with it. Um, and that will just be ongoing and see, see how it goes. The commitment to myself um, first and then to uh, anyone else that feels that that would be something they would be interested in joining in and connecting in with. Shayla, I want to say thank you and uh, just kudos to you for pulling all of this together and and I think it will just keep on growing because you're because of your generosity and offering it as a as a pre conference mm -hmm. for whoever wants to touch in at whatever time and I thank every all of you for showing up mm -hmm. <laughs> as many times as you have. <laughs> Yeah, there's been real commitment in the space, and uh, yeah, I it just I feel I feel better. This week has just really made a difference for me. I feel connected to my community. I feel supported. I feel uh, in touch with um, ideas and concepts that that uh, that really bolster my life and reinforce things that I want to do and. Um, the regularity of it has, has, has been instilled in my body at six, it's six, about six o'clock. I'm like, okay, what am I? Oh yeah. Yeah. I got to go and sit and meet <laughs> people, you know? And so now that's in my body. So, um, as a body memory. And so at six 30, my commitment is every day I will be returning for myself to this spot. This has become my spot where I will meditate. So. <laughs> uh, or whatever, self care. Yeah. Whatever yeah. happens. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you. And sorry, was anyone else that wanted to say? Yeah, just, uh, just thank you, Shayla. It's been amazing to watch you grow, to put it together, to um, and know that yeah, it is a calling to um, to get people to look at self nurture in a different way, mm. and to, to put that as a base, as a first, to then be able to share and help other people. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, thank you so That's much. It's an amazing job. Oh, well thank done. You. Yay. Thank you, Claire. And <laughs> thank you so much, Celeste, for showing up as well, and Wanda and, uh, and Judith. It's been so great to see you so regularly here. Uh, I feel like I know you a little now and I uh, love the story you shared today. And Steve, thank you for, for tuning in. I really appreciate that calling in from I think it was uh, Alberta well, yeah thank thanks. you yeah thanks for being here okay well I guess that's a wrap my friends mm -hmm. have a good rest Shayla thank yeah you. well oh my gosh last night was fabulous with the with the sound journey that we went on and my, I'm all sort of recalibrated it's it's quite beautiful. And then your practice tonight, Leela, just mm. like icing on the birthday cake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>